in progressive multiple sclerosis, both primary and secondary multiple sclerosis, there's a major unmet need in terms of progression of disability, for example, walking function or arm function or cognition. So whilst there's some emerging early treatments, which are now um, available to control the inflammatory part, if you like, the immune part of progression, for example, we think of ocrelizumab and we think of siponimod. Nonetheless, um, these likely have a small effect. And so what we need to try and get to is having an effect on the neurodegeneration component, i.e. the component that occurs without inflammatory activity. And ideally one day, of course, one would like to repair and remyelinate. Um, but what we'd like to really get to grips with will be slowing down uh, the progression on the neurodegenerative part. And so the octopus trial um, is a way to try and speed that process up. So it's a particular trial design. So medications, when they're coming into use, go through what are called randomized controlled trials. And often there are one to one. So there's a control, let's say standard of care, and patients and the other comparator will be standard of care plus the particular new um, entity that one is interested in. So that's a one-to-one -one basis. And they, of course, are very important, but they take a, a long time to come through. And so what we're trying to do here is, if you like, concertina down the different stages of randomized controlled trials, the so-called phase two element, which, where we use a marker of the disease uh, and here we're looking at the change in brain volume what's called whole brain atrophy and then if that barrier is passed patients continue to be randomized into trial and to look at the final outcome of interest which is disability um, in some way so octopus a, a person with progressive multiple sclerosis fitting quite broad uh, criteria would be randomized by a computer and to be on the standard of care or standard of care plus drug A or standard of care plus drug B and they would pass through and then looking at the interim part let's say the, the MRI part if a medication was not effective we'd drop out that medication and we'd look to add in a new medication let's say a medication C um, that can occur at any moment, but probably around that time. And then the machine, if you like, would carry on. And so in that way, it's a more efficient um, tool, if you like, like a design tool for doing randomized controls trials. And we're trying to get beyond the start and the stop. Then there's a gap then a start and a stop. We're trying to bring it all in one go so that in parallel, um, we can explore different medications that we hope would have an effect on initially slowing progression or neuroprotecting progression in multiple sclerosis. And uh, we spent a lot of time um, thinking about this over the last four or five years under the umbrella of the UK Multiple Sclerosis Society who fund this work. And we've had different work streams over these years looking at if you like the, the mechanics, the statistical mechanics of the trial design, looking at the drug choice, we're particularly interested in what are called repurposed drugs. So drugs that are used for other purposes, but experimental evidence shows that they could well be useful in multiple sclerosis and progressive multiple sclerosis. And we published that work out about two or three years ago. And then we've had a lot of engagement um, with patients with multiple sclerosis, with progressive multiple sclerosis to help us shape our design and shape the machine, if you like, to make sure that it's, it's what they want so that we can uh, take this forward. So we've brought all of these different elements to the boil now um, in our protocol and uh, we're submitting that, we've submitted that now to the regulatory authorities.